Hand menus can simplify interactions by keeping essential controls within easy reach. In this video, I'll show you how to set it up using Unity and its XR Interaction Toolkit package. So here I have my Unity project open which has been set up with the latest XR Interaction Toolkit package and other packages like XR Hands and OpenXR plugin. It has also been set up with all the project settings to make sure this works with the hand interaction feature of the MetaQuest devices. You can also download this starter project from the GitHub linked in the description below. Or if you want to set this up from scratch, then I will leave a link for that as well. Now this prefab comes with all the components that are required to track your headset, left and right controllers and your hands. If we check the left hand or right hand, you'll see that it has the poke interactor, near field interactor and all the other components to support these interactions. Once again, I made a dedicated video on hand tracking and how to set it up from scratch. If you're interested, then feel free to check out this video over here. Now first I will show you the quickest way to set up hand UI menus using the existing prefabs and then I will show you how to create your own and set that up. So in your project window, search for hand menu, select hand menu with button activation and add it inside XR origin hands. And this prefab comes with the track pose driver to track your left hand and right hand. It has the hand menu wrist button with the hand menu script. Now this script takes a game object. It lets you choose the hand alignment, whether you want it to be on your left hand, right hand or either one of them. It lets you choose the hand up direction, whether you want it to be world up, transform up or camera. Up. Then it has the palm anchors, which tracks your left hand and right hand position. Next, we have the position to follow configuration, which lets you choose the minimum and maximum follow distance before the tween starts playing. So tween is a very nice package that will allow you to shrink down or size up any game object or it will let you create different sort of animation. You should definitely check that out. Then we have the gaze alignment configuration, which lets you hide the menu once you're not looking at it. So if you choose it, you can give an angle. So once you cross that angle, the menu is going to get hidden. Next, there's animation settings, which will let you hide and reveal the animation. So if you check that, it's going to animate. And then it has the selection behavior, which lets you hide the menu on select. And finally, it has the follow presets, which will follow certain rules to track your hands and controllers. So if you click on the preset and open it up in the inspector, you will see that it has the local space anchor transforms. So since we are looking at the underwatch hand preset, it's going to be somewhere over here. Now you can adjust these values if you want to change the anchor position. Next, it has the hand anchor angle constraint, which lets you choose the palm reference axis. So right now it's selected to down. So if this is the up axis, this is the down axis, which means you're looking at the palm. And then would you like to invert it to the right hand? We, no, we don't want to because it's the same for right hand. Then you can choose whether you want the palm to be facing the user. So if you enable this, you can provide a threshold. So it will check if your palm is facing the user within that threshold values. Then it lets you choose if the palm is required to be facing up. So if you have chosen it, once again, you can give it a value. So this is palm facing down. This is palm facing up and the value is 72. So which means that until 72 degrees, probably until this angle, the menu will be seen and once it crosses that the menu will no longer be seen next it has the snap to gaze configuration so here if you enable it and give it a threshold value and if you gaze at the menu at that particular within that threshold values then the menu is going to snap in the direction in which you're looking the hide delay configuration will hide the menu after 0.15 seconds after the hand tracking is lost or if the hand tracking is no longer seen. The smoothing configuration will allow you to move the UI menu smoothly as and when the transform value changes. Going back to the hand menu wrist button, it has the follow game object with the wrist button UI and a text button. Now this text button has a toggle game object script, which is referencing to this particular game object here. So when you press this button, the toggle game object script is going to get activated and it's going to activate the scroll view, which looks something like this. The hand menu scroll view also has a hand menu script, which has been set up in such a way that the menu is going to get tracked somewhere at the side of your left hand and your right hand. All right, now you can save your scene. Make sure you're connected your headset using link and press play. And as you can see here, once you look at your wrist, the menu button pops up. Same thing for your right hand. And if you click on the menu button, the scroll view menu comes up and you can interact with this. Now, if you look away, the scroll view gets hidden. But when you look back, the menu comes back. If you want to hide it, you need to press on this button once again. Now I'll show you how to create your own canvas and set it up for hand tracking. First, select the hand menu button activation and disable it. Then create a UI canvas. 
Set its render mode to void space. Reset its position to 0 in all the direction. Set its width to 19, height to 22 and scale it down to 0 0.01 in all the direction. Then right click on the canvas, select UI and add a panel. Change its pixel per unit multiplier to make it look little better. And you can also change its background color and alpha value. Then go ahead and add the UI elements of your choice. In my case, I'm going to add a scroll view. Scale it all the way down so that it fits inside this canvas. Open scroll view, open viewport and inside content, I'm going to create some more UI elements. Nothing but a UI button and duplicate it probably five, six times. Select content and add a component called vertical layout group. Set the child alignment as middle center and you can give spacing between the buttons and also some padding. Once you're satisfied with your canvas, select the canvas game object and add the drag device graphic raycaster component. Now this will make sure that you can use your poke interactors to interact with the UI buttons. And then in your project window, search for hand menu setup. Select the prefab and add it inside XR origin hands. Open the prefab and select your canvas and drag and drop it inside follow game object. And that's about it. Now you can save your scene and press play. And as you can see here, once I look at my palm, the menu pops up and I can use it. Click on the buttons. And if I use my right hand, the menu gets transferred. And once again, I can use the menu. Perfect. Now, if you also want to have a button near your wrist, which you can click on to open a menu, then in your project window, search for hand menu setup, select the prefab and add it to your XR origin headset. And let's go rename this as hand menu wrist setup. And here inside the hand menu component, scroll down and we want to change the presets from menu hands follow preset to the under watch preset. So just click on this asset. It will take you inside this folder. Select under watch controller, drag and drop it here and select under watch hands and drag and drop it here. Then open this prefab and inside the follow game object, you can add any button of your choice. So in your project window, search for button, filter it for prefabs. And here you can either use poke, push, text or touchpad button. Now I'd like to use touchpad button. Now since it's a UI button, inside your follow game object, you need to create a UI canvas. Change its render mode to world space. Set the position to 0, 0, 0 in all the direction. Set its width and height to 10 and scale it to 0 0.01 in all the direction. Then select your touchpad button, drag and drop it inside the canvas and scale this to 0.1 in all the direction as well. Next, open the prefab, open image, select the text and you can rename this as toggle menu. Select the touchpad button and add the toggle game object component. Here we want to toggle the actual UI menu. So select the hand UI setup that you have created, drag and drop it in here. Select the hand menu setup and deactivate it. Now go back to the touchpad button and here inside the button component, we want to add on click, drag and drop the game object and from the function, select toggle game object and select toggle set active. Also here you can see that the toggle menu is right now facing towards us, but we want it to face up. So select the canvas and rotate it in the X direction by 90. And probably you can bring it slightly down here like this as well. All right, so now you can save your scene and press play. And this time when you look at your wrist, you'll be able to see the toggle menu. And if you click on it, and we're not able to click on it, and that's because we haven't added the target device graphic raycaster component. So select the canvas, scroll down, add the track device graphic raycaster component. And now when you press play, you will be able to press the toggle menu and when you press that your menu will open up and you will be able to use it all right so with that you know how to make hand ui menus if you found this video to be helpful make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you in the next one